Hello everyone. Welcome to Knock O'Neill Court Team in the North Sparrow Mountains. Before I go any further guys on my walk around, I'm going to switch on my EMF meter straight away. here last week with a couple of friends just scouting the place and uh, had to walk around uh, got massive EMS spikes uh, totally random places um, the highest I've ever seen in the high hundreds of my guys so hopefully we'll get the same again today or at least something so uh, let's have a walk around This is the impressive court. Oh my goodness, there's the meter. Didn't have it on camera. I think it was about 8.3. I'll have to keep that on camera. That's a good sign. It's a cold wind today. Sorry if it's spoiling the audio. I'm trying to speak up a wee bit. I have a wind muff on my mic, but we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, so uh, this was a court team, or a horned team sometimes I call I'm standing in the courtyard at the front, kind of a horseshoe shape. Uh, there's some stones missing from this end. But, uh, Wow, some impressive big stones there. Dates from uh, about 5,000 years ago, Neolithic times. This is all that's left of it, unfortunately. But, uh, still pretty impressive. Wow, look at the readings, oh my god. Right at the portal. Okay, let's think what, what's causing that. You tell me, if it's not a spirit, what is causing that? There's absolutely no electrical Closest thing is those wind turbines, but they'd be getting readings all the time. And we're too far away from them. There we go, five. I don't think this place gets many visitors. So I'm guessing the, there is ancient spirits here and they're just curious. I think the fact that I'm standing and talking to myself is creating a vibration in there in the air through the ether. They must be able to hear what I'm saying, whether they can understand what I'm saying, I don't know. No one knows a Neolithic or a Bronze Age language. So. Okay, we'll keep going then. This is the the entrance, a double entrance, door jams, which is quite unusual. I'll just keep talking. This creates a small antechamber at the front. So there'd obviously been a lintel on here, this was all obviously covered over. Possibly a corbel type ceiling on this these two next chambers. So we enter the first chamber with respect. Try and duck down a bit out of the wind. Whew. I 
That's good readings, guys. I'm planning a wee paranormal experiment with some music. I was hoping it wouldn't be quite so windy, but um, it's not too bad in the chamber. I was planning on doing it in the courtyard there, but uh, I might have to come into this chamber, maybe the next one. It's a good bit of shelter when you duck down. Beautiful big lintel stone still in place between the two chambers. Yeah. It's like it's acknowledging what I'm saying, it is a beautiful stone. Quartz pebble on top there. Oh, I'll try and limbo through here. Make it old man noises. Second chamber. Slightly larger, I guess, than the first one. It's a really nice size. This old site's been in use for a very long time hundreds, could be a thousand years, uh, right into the Bronze Age. Uh, been some great finds from flint knives to axe heads, loads of different pottery from different eras, uh, Neolithic. There's a bigger type pottery was found as well, um, and cremated bones obviously. <sighs> Feel out of breath all of a sudden. Maybe it's just talking. Yeah, so... There's some Bronze Age bones found in the first chamber, I believe. Neolithic found in this chamber. The first chamber. Oh, look at that high rain, oh my goodness. During the Bronze Age, the whole cairn was modified. It was a rectangular cairn. I'll show you the shape of it. And it had a... Those far stones are actually the curb from a giant round cairn that was built right round the whole rectangle in the Bronze Age. And there's Bronze Age burials in the court. Which is very unusual. It's used for long periods of time by many different peoples. Obviously, a sacred place. This is the back chamber, similar to Tomney Rankin. This is not too far away from here. This is a subsidiary chamber which is entered via different opening, it's a small passage into this chamber. The Neolithic pottery found in this chamber was of a different style, strangely, than the, the Neolithic pottery found in these two chambers. So I'm not sure what the thinking was behind it or the reasoning. It's racing because of all this action on the EMF meter. If you don't know, that's an electromagnetic field meter. It's, it's, not, it's normally used for detecting dangerous magnetic fields in your home or your your workplace. Um, it's also said that spirits are made up of electromagnetic energy, and that's what I believe. I think that's agreeing with me again. I'm not sure who's here, if there's one or many. It's 
definitely one at least. Hopefully it's a kind spirit. I'm here with love and light. No disrespect. I'm here to tell your story. Yeah, so I'll duck down again out of the wind a little bit. So these are commonly used by paranormal investigators. And there's no other reason to get an electromagnetic spike in a place like this. You know, out in the countryside, wide open. So uh, it definitely is anomalous, in my opinion. It's an ancient spirit following me around here. I'll go back out the front again and have a walk around the outside. Again. These are the two curbs, what's left of them. This is the original curb stones from Neolithic times. This goes back to there, where really they went flat across and more in a rectangular shape. With the beautiful horn shape forming the court at the front there. This is a later curb, Bronze Age, part of a giant round cairn as I said that was put over the whole site before it was, oh my goodness that was 80 something there, what? I'm back to zero. It's the most action I've ever had. I just had a feeling today. Um, just need to stay calm. We're off again, 20, 25, 22. There's a spirit right beside me right now. Completely invisible obviously in this light with this camera. <sighs> okay, we'll keep going on the tour. <laughs> I think this pile of rocks and debris and part of the stone wall is a uh, all the cairn material that was removed from the whole thing when they were excavating. I think it's been excavated three times over the years. Last time was 1970s. I hope that wind's not too bad for you. Chilly. Very chilly. I don't know what the cows think, but they started moving away once the EMF started going off. This is the other side of the Neolithic curb, and uh, sort of the round curb would have been a bit wider, maybe, than that fence. That's a little subsidiary chamber entrance. It's beautifully made. This place has kind of a bend in it. Not sure what the idea is.
think the best thing to do is get straight on with the paranormal experiment. I think I'm going to try it in that first chamber where there's the least wind. Fortunately, uh, I plan to do it just here, you know, in the kind of centre of the court. But, uh, the audio will be rubbish. There's <laughs> another little tickle of eight there. I'm going to have to switch this off and uh, I'll get another camera set up and just film myself setting up the experiment. Probably use my wee first spectrum, we'll get that ready. Try and film as much as I can while I'm here, capture any further anomalies. Wow. Oh. <laughs> it's crazy. It's a powerful spirit here, at least one. Okay, I'll see you in a bit. guys I'm nearly ready to go so I'll show you quickly what I've got set up here that's a little REM pod there I'm gonna switch that on it generates an electric field there an electromagnetic field so in theory the spirit comes near the wee aerial or anything with its own energy, she'd set that off. It's just in between the two chambers. I'm in the front chamber. Uh, here I've got my little Bluetooth speaker. I'm going to try and play some sounds. Like a slow, calm drumming. I'm seeing some readings already on the EMF meter. Got a big that's my big piece of quartz, you maybe recognise it from other videos. There's spikes well over twenty already there. It's just started. Good timing, thank you. I say thank you, but I don't know if they can understand me. So I brought an apple because something I would recognise and oftentimes some food items were buried with the cremated remains and other offerings for their journey to the other world. I'm going to leave the apple when I go. The blackbirds will enjoy that anyway. The four incense sticks there, I'm going to light those. Uh, I've got another OEMF sensor there, it just has lights on it, just got a little flicker there. Look. Yeah. This is active, very active. The MS going mad, I'm just going back to zero. Staying at zero. Transient energy, transient EMF. There's a way again. I'll light these incenses and we'll get started.
think the most respectful thing for me to do is just sit here calmly and clear my head. Give out a positive vibe. I'm going to start the music now. A signal to stay in the chamber here. It's not a great phone signal. That's it started. Set you over here. the music that's been 10 minutes and uh, I was enjoying it but I uh, don't know if it went down very well with our ancestors as soon as the music stopped I'm now getting EMF readings at the courts there's a spike there just went red six point something I think it was I think they may prefer the peace and quiet. And who can blame them?
like I'm not stay too much longer and uh, let the spirits rest again. I'll let the incense burn down. I don't think they mind that. And the, uh, I'm going to leave the apple, as I said. Not be leaving the quartz. So, nothing on the EMF meter. Um, perhaps I should move that closer to the other bits and bobs there. Now we bring down my food spectrum as well. So, got my no food spectrum just here now. Overshooting the whole thing. Another little action cam. Close up of that. The other electromagnetic sensor lights up with lights on the REM pod as well, all in that corner. I'm gonna go and get a coffee and uh, a bite to eat. And uh, just let that, let those incense sticks burn down. <laughs> And uh, I've got another little toy to come back, I'll do a walk around, I've got an SLS camera app, um, structured light sensor camera, uh, you've maybe seen them on ghost hunting shows, but they can pick up distortions in the natural light and map it out as a stick figure, um, it's said to be a manifestation, a ghost trying to manifest. Hard to explain. SLS camera, you can giggle it. I'm gonna give it a go. See if I can pick up any stick figures or anything at all. I haven't really used it yet, so I'll get a cup of coffee first and then we'll do that. sitting quietly in the chamber behind having my coffee break and um, every 10 minutes it's been really all quiet so I'm wondering um, my theory about the human voice and certain frequencies of the voice I just got a little spike point two um, just talking can stimulate spirit activity the voice is obviously registered in the spirit realm and spirits, whether they understand the language or not, I don't know, I don't know. When you're a spirit, you know, does language matter? I don't know. Um, so I thought sitting here, maybe for a minute, just talking to you guys might have, you know, started some activity again on the EMF meter. But, um, I'll get my SLS out now and we'll have a walk around. Do a slow walk around let you see that. So, this is my little app. I'll, uh, I'll flip the camera around. You can see it's mapping me in as a stick figure. That's kind of the general idea. Let's flip the camera back. Start recording. Now oh, it's hard to hold on to. Let's see, that's better. Can you see that? Closer. Well, we'll see. It has gone quiet for 15 20 minutes now, so whether the spirits have to recharge their energy because they were quite busy when I first got here for sure. It's the Wednesday down a wee bit, which is something.
Yeah, makes a bleep. If it does pick up something. So I'm trying to watch where I'm walking as well as two screens. <laughs> Yeah, that's a little subsidiary chamber at the back. Use this massive stone between the second chamber and the subsidiary chamber. Must have been mega important site this to be in use for so long and such a prominent hilltop. We're looking out across the Ban Valley there, east. Definitely well worth a visit this place if you get the chance. There's so much history in this part of the mountains. If you could uh, base yourself here and have a holiday just touring around if that's what you're into you know you could spend a week exploring and most of them are uh, very rarely visited you know this one's under state care so that's why access is is easy um, but you know a lot of them are under state care Beautiful big stones. That one's pretty massive. That's a pretty size one there. Nice shape. Another nice shape. They're all nice. <laughs> How they moved them. Wow, such an effort. Incredible, really. Oh well, nothing. Nothing picked up on the SLS. Maybe should have got it out earlier when it was busy. Go back in this corner for a wee second. Oh, I got something there. I'm sure. It's not mapping in, but it's bleeping. Oh, it's just picking up my wee camera there. You can see the, the outline of it. That's definitely not a spirit. That's just my camera again. That's my camera again. <laughs> Very sensitive for you, isn't it? I don't know how reliable it is, really. It's the first time I've used it. somewhere else I pointed out it. <laughs> yeah. I think that'll do me guys. I'll leave these spirits in peace. Uh, if you can understand my voice I just want to thank you. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope it hasn't dragged on too long. I'm not sure how long it's going to end up. Um, 
Thanks a lot for watching to the end. Stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now, guys.